Today I just thought it would be interesting to look inside of this trip light ISO bar. And uh, I really like ISO bar. They make a really good um, surge suppressor and strip. But this one in particular, even though it's brand new, we put it in and it trips the breaker. So uh, I did smell smoke. So the smoke was let out of this one immediately. Um, couldn't find any issue with the circuit to cause it. So not meaning this negative towards this company at all. It's, I've had really good luck with them in the past and still will buy them. But um, I'm just going to finish taking this off. First look inside, slide this plate off and we do see a little bit of residue. And there's what we have inside. And I do see our black blackened area there. So I'm not 100% sure how this group of MOVs was laid out. It's a lot of black stuff in between. We see this small uh, barista pack here is two baristers it looks like uh, with a, a little thermal limit in between sandwiched in between them. I don't know if this one had one or not. I figured it'd be interesting to find out. Uh, so back now with a setup in the garage because I didn't want to actually test this out with the computer hooked up to the same circuit or I do have it plugged in I'm gonna put on a face shield because I know that it, at some point it smoked up those MOVs right so with it off and reset I'm gonna switch it on I guess that's what happens so that did trip my ground fault let's try it one more time tripped it again all right, at least we saw what's going on with it. Now we'll tear it apart. So now we got a little bit of extra blackness on there. Just trying to show you what happened there. And uh, I don't think it was um, quite as bad being hooked to a ground fault. It picked up a fault pretty quick and tripped. So a uh, relatively small event. I'm going to try to tear into this and get a little bit better view of it. Of course, unplugged. So we, we definitely had that MOV smoke, and it may have just been that one disc, maybe one faulty um, varistor. It is hard to say. As bad as this looks and as bad as it smells and as set it up as it got, that's a lot of magic smoke let out there. Um, we didn't actually blow the fuse, so um, that was kind of surprising, but the ground fault actually... Uh, protected before the fuse or even uh before the circuit breaker would trip and even before the fuse would blow so so that was very very beneficial to have that ground fault on this uh with a 15 amp breaker it probably would have blew the fuse before it would have tripped depending on uh how quick the current went up but we do see here it looks like that one mov is the main issue so now that we've seen what the short circuit was causing i think i'm going to go get some alcohol take this outside and clean it up really really well with some alcohol and a thermal fuse cleaned up good and it just like the um, overcurrent protection fuse it is still good so it didn't get so hot that um that it opened up which is a good thing so both of these are still good and even though it cleaned up pretty well some of the soot didn't clean up as well 
on some of the MOVs as I thought it might. But we do see that the one right up against the thermal, it is chipped. So it spewed out pretty good. No, no uh, putting back that magic smoke. So they did not make these things easy to come back and work on. Because of the way that they, uh, they use the push-in stabs. So what I'm going to try to do is remove the MOV that I know is faulty. And uh, we'll do some checks on it. And I really don't have any cutters that can get in there very well. So I'm actually just going to work it back and forth. See if I can get it to break. Yeah, it took a few minutes. Just trying to get to the terminals a little bit. Just got to crack off some of that dip coating. There we go. All right, so if we look at the data sheet on the 20D201K, it's 130 volts RMS and 170 volts DC and max continuous current. So that 201K is going to be a 200 uh, nominal voltage or the 185 to 225 on the Minimax. So it should take over 170 volts DC before this starts to conduct. So back now with my power supply current limited to about an amp and um, maxed out at 30 volts. I shouldn't even phase uh, this for wrist to right 30. You probably heard that click without me showing a screenshot. It dropped down to zero volts. Went to current limit. So, yeah, definitely wouldn't work on 120 volts. Still got my meter on ohms here. You should never be able to ohm a varistor and see any reading because there's no way a meter can put out enough voltage to make it show any resistance change. About 25 ohms, that's not good. So apparently we just had a bad barista from the factory. So of course if we go across our barista network, like this is the um, the hot to the neutral MOV protection circuit or network, we definitely um, get into the really, really high, up into the mega ohms even, which is what we would expect. And we can't get to this side quite as well, but we can see where it goes from this side, which is hooked to the thermal fuse. Up to the neutral. And now we're into the mega ohms across this little network. So we just have one MOV down, which means uh, just a little bit less joules rating on the um, on the actual surge su suppression. Just like I guess they have a different model here. I'm not familiar, but V1, V2, V3, they don't have V4 populated here across your main input. Uh, power. Yeah, that's across your hot and your neutral coming in. And then this one here is a bank with V5, 6, 7, 8. So we don't have a varistor 5 now. And this little network here has 9 and 10 with a thermal fuse in between as well. Some more tape here. Capton tape for the win. Wago terminal is taking place a little crimp terminal. And back now with that shorted varista removed and all back together, 
Uh, I'm confident enough with it oming it and putting DC voltages across it that um, I'm going to try it out here on the bench with my computer recording. So here we go. And there we go. Protection present. Lines okay and no faults. Back now with the heater plugged up. And just a quick test for it. And of course, this is just a look inside. Surge suppressor is something we should never really repair, especially when it's had an actual true um, surge come through. But this being a brand new suppressor, I just thought it would be interesting to take a look inside and see what was wrong with it. And a very unusual uh, bag part from the factory, it looks like. So, once again, not recommend the devil repair a surge suppressor or anything like that when you're dealing with power. But just interesting to look inside. So, uh, please don't try to repair one. If you do so, you're doing it at your own risk. Always be careful with mains voltage. I hope you learned a little bit today about the uh, surge suppressors and the uh, metal oxide baristers or MOVs that's used for surge suppression. If you like the video, Please like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.